Time to get our LSU fix here at the Voice of College Football, courtesy Lon Philip Sullivan, LSU Odyssey. Check him out right there with the latest on LSU football coverage. Lon, how are we doing tonight? Mark, the gatekeeper. What's up, brother? How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. What have you been up to? It's a hot, long summer. Lots of recruiting, lots of football, lots of beating the pavement to find out uh, what's going on with LSU. And we bring Kelvin it Banks in particular might have been uh, a guy that uh, wanted to steer away from uh, a lot of uh, hot, muggy summer nights, possibly down in the bayou and went uh, to the Northwest, chose the Oregon yeah. Ducks, the second rated offensive tackle in the country. Yeah, uh, you know, things were pretty solid with Kelvin Banks Jr. after his visit here with his family. Uh, it was a, it was a very successful visit, very success, successful coaches' meetings with the parents, all that. And, uh, you know, it just seemed like then after a few days of some buzz, you where, where a lot of leading recruiting experts were, you know, saying Banks Jr. is a locked LSU – uh, things kind of started to change after some visits after that. Um, and you're hearing a lot of Texas A&M talk. Every lead expert um, was saying Texas A&M was the pick. A lot of people were changing from LSU to Texas A&M. But then Oregon, I think a few people, I'm not really exactly who predicted Oregon, but it wasn't us. Um, we were 50-50 on whether you'd come to LSU or some other school. We we were kind of flabbergasted whether it would be Oregon or Texas A&M. Um, so we just said 50-50, either us or LSU. First, we were pretty high on Banks coming, but then that changed pretty quickly after I got some information and was like, okay, uh, th this this is shifting. Uh, the Tigers were losing confidence uh, of getting him. And, um, yeah, and we found out he's going to, to Oregon. A fantastic young man, great family. I, I wish him nothing but the best. Wish he would have been a Tiger, but, you know, it's not the way it turned out. If you look at geography coming out of Humble, Texas, I'm just going to make a, a bit of a prognostication of sorts there just to say maybe the recruitment isn't over considering it's mid-July and he doesn't sign until December and he's a long, long ways from home there yeah. in Humble, Texas, going up to the Northwest and to play football with Mario Cristobal in Oregon. It's a great point. That's a great point. People sometimes close the book way too soon. And uh, it's, the recruiting's a long game. It's a marathon. And nobody knows that better than Lon Phillips Sullivan. You can catch him on uh, LSU Odyssey, breaking down the Bayou Bengals for us uh, here on a regular basis at uh, the Voice of College Football. Please like the video, share the videos out on social media, and please subscribe as we break down again LSU and the SEC. You've got a long list of commits that are coming up that are going to be crucial to LSU and a lot of teams, especially in the SEC. Demario Tolan, the most uh, recent coming up here on July 7th. We're talking about uh, 27th rated uh, linebacker in the country, according to the composite top 300 player out of Orlando, Florida. Yeah, he's committing on, on July 8th. Uh, he's coming out of Dr. Phillips. What, what impressed me the most about this kid Mark, 80 solo tackles out of his 89 total tackle haul. So that's just last year. This kid is a firm tackler. He also threw in four sacks, two tackles for loss, one quarterback hurry, and uh, you know, one forced fumble, another recovery, four passes defended. He can pretty much do it all. I feel like him and Blake Baker are pretty tight on the recruiting trail. I expect, I expect him to commit to LSU. Um, I really don't think um, LSU is going to be, you know, missing on on this kid because I see that the relationship is there. I see that there is um, really due diligence by Blake by Blake Baker because here's the thing: Demario Tolan, he's a Florida kid, and uh, Blake Baker, he's been recruiting him since he was a defensive coordinator at Miami, so he's known of this kid for quite some time. He's been scouting him, and so. I think um, the, the the main uh, the main objective was to get him on campus for a visit, which we did on I, I believe it was June eighteenth. Let me check that real quick. Yeah, June, you are right. June eighteenth, and the one thing I, I I always wondered about though, he did go and see Miami on June twenty fifth. Um, that was the final visit. 
So did my, you know, is Miami coming in there with the last second grab there, last second change of heart because they were the first team recruiting him with Blake Baker? Or is the, the relationship with the coach, Blake Baker, and, you know, the allure of going to LSU, you know, the legacy of guys like Devin White, linebackers like Patrick Queen, will he go? You know, it's, it's very interesting. July 8th, I think he's going to LSU. But that's just my pick. We'll see. Again, uh, for Kelvin Banks, the final two stops of his tour, LSU and Miami, looked at Tennessee and Knoxville a little bit earlier in June, announcing on July 8th. That's uh, coming up here quickly. So the rest of this list that you've got uh, handy in regards to um, commits that uh, could impact LSU. Chris Graves Jr. out of Bishop Perot. I mean, he's listed as an athlete, but Corey Raymond has been recruiting him as a corner. This is this is a young man I did an interview and a profile on. He had zero offers going into December of last year. Zero offers, Mark, with like no contact from coaches or anything. Now that blew up to like over 40 is the number I believe right now. Um, it, it outrageous uh, how his how his stock exploded just from you know coaches finally paying attention. It's kind of lost in the shuffle from last year, but now he's finally gotten that attention and that pedigree, and he's he's got options. I don't know if Chris uh, Graves Jr. is going to come to LSU. It's I think he might be going to going to Miami. I think that might be my 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 end pick there is Miami because I feel like he's felt more at home there. Um, I feel like there was a sh- you know a shift. I, I know he loves Corey Raymond, but I think something about Miami is going to uh, have him go there. But that's on July 9th. But the day after Mark, July 10th, Fitzgerald West, uh, you know, defensive line, offensive line guy here at a Lafayette Christian Academy. That's Sage Ryan's teammate. Um, you know, he's a defensive lineman, you know, no mistake about it. But at the same time, LSU said, Hey, let's try you at offensive line. At, at, at a recent LSU camp. And so he tried an offensive line and he was dominant, Mark. And so they offered him as an offensive lineman. So it's kind of like, uh, it's, uh, you know, will he come to LSU because uh, we're, we're offering him for an offensive line, the offensive line, or is he going to, you know, maybe go to Texas A&M because he wants to play defensive line. You know, all the expert picks are saying LSU, um, it's hard not to not to argue with him because you know there is that relationship there. He is really close with Sage. Um, I think you know as a local Louisiana talent, I think he's interested in staying home as well. Lafayette Christian Academy out of uh, Lafayette, uh, Louisiana, and uh, if you look at uh, the rankings, they're not necessarily impressive. But a number of recruiting people tell me. Don't necessarily look at those rankings. Look at the offers. And if LSU and Texas A&M are coming after this young man, then that tells you pretty much what you need to know. Also in the running, it looks like uh, Louisiana and SMU as well uh, because his national rankings around 1,000. And uh, number 140 defensive lineman, top 44 player in the state of Louisiana. Well, that's the thing is, you know, I, Lafayette, Lafayette is getting completely ignored, I feel, by the national media. But there is some unbelievable pipeline of talent coming out of Lafayette. Jack Besh, Sage Ryan. I mean, Malik Neighbors. The list goes on and on and on. And historically as well, um, it's just out of every region of Louisiana, really. But uh, it's great to, you know, give Lafayette a shout out, especially when you got a five star quarterback like Walker Howard coming out of there as well. Got to Lon Phillips Sullivan on the line from LSU Odyssey. Head on over there, check out his work as uh, he covers uh, LSU football, gets a set for the 2021 season. Of course, SEC Media Day is coming up very soon that will lead us right into August camp. All right, Kamari Wilson. You've got a feel there based on, of course, information, just but based on the way this is setting up in regards to his lean. Yeah. Um, you know, once again, like we you said earlier, or you know, it is early in the process. It is just, you know, barely getting into the middle of summer here. 
And um, I, at the same time, the evidence for me right now, it's pronounced enough to say that, you know, LSU had some great starts with Kamari Wilson. Durante Jones was getting in there great and, and forming a really good relationship with him. And I still think he's going to absolutely recruit, recruit, recruit. But it feels like it's, you know, the, the, the race is slipping away. Uh, I think Kamari Wilson is, you know, being recruited really well by Will Muschamp. Will Muschamp has made him that number one priority, whereas, you know, he's able to argue, you know, Will Muschamp when in these conversations with Kamari, you know, hey, LSU, they already got Jacoby Matthews, the number one safety, you know, five-star safety in this class, you know. Um, so they already went and got their priority guy. You know, we need our priority guy come, come to Georgia, you know. So I think that is enticing as well. I don't think LSU should give up whatsoever on recruiting Kamari Wilson. I think, in fact, they should double down their efforts uh, regardless of if a commitment comes or not. But he is definitely trending and leaning to Georgia, in my opinion. Just there's there's too much too much evidence going that way, especially when you look at the actions behind things. Um, you know, it yeah, it's trending Georgia's way, in my opinion. Kamari Wilson out of IMG Academy, the number one safety in the country, according to the composite. Uh, 247 Sports has him at number two, top five player in the state of Florida, top 25 player in the nation. A prized get, no question about that. Uh, Texas A&M LSU, the final two stops for him in June, the final two weekends of the month of June. Well, Lon Philip Sullivan on the line, talking LSU football here and join him on LSU Odyssey. And uh, please support us here at the Voice of College Football as well. Any of this um, situation involving Ed Ogeron, do you think uh, factoring into the recruiting uh, landscape for LSU football over the last few weeks? Yes, 100%. 100%. Um, in fact, you know, this might be unpopular for some people to hear um, that maybe they don't want to hear it. And so they'll, they'll boo me or whatever, but I don't care. It's the truth. Um, the information I've gotten from families is that, yes, that information when even though the a lot of the information that was put out there were quotes that had already been released by USA Today, already uh, stories that had been released by USA Today, just the fact that those uh, that information was recycled into the media it affected, you know, how people saw the, you know, the program. But I will say one thing that is different about this information, Mark. The old uh, Rosie boys, um, old Roy, old Rosie Finch boys um, company that that Ed Orgeron owns. Um, they have been included in a lawsuit. Um, they have been listed as a defendant in a lawsuit. And so what does that mean? What is that about? The lawsuit alleges that this company was a criminal enterprise, um, you know, funneling money into the program. And it, it seems really, you know, it's titillating, of course. And, you know, it's it, everyone would love to have such a big story and such a crazy scandal to top all of this off. But I just don't feel like that's the reality. I feel like this might be a little reaching here. Um, I, I need to see evidence of a criminal enterprise and criminal organization before I'm going to <laughs> write anything or report anything near to say that Coach Ordron is doing anything illegal. There's been no evidence to ever prove it. To me, it feels almost borderline witch hunt. Show me the evidence. You know, it feels like these are very pointed um, attacks through the media to affect recruiting. You can't help but think that because this is not the first time. I, I've been dealing with recruiting for quite a, quite a bit here, and uh, this is probably about the 15th, 20th time that they've released certain things at a certain time. and it's quite obvious that there's an agenda and angle about it. And I, you know, it's, of course, of course, of course, we, we, we want to find the truth of everything here, but it's getting muddied. The waters are getting muddied when agendas get involved. 
Um, just, just give us evidence, give us facts, and uh, leave the politics of recruiting out of it. It would be nice if everyone and everything was above board in this day and age, but um, that's never been the case and certainly not in 2021. All right, Lon Philip Sullivan, always joining us, always uh, certainly a resource that uh, we appreciate here at the Voice of College Football to bring us LSU football uh, breakdowns involving recruiting. Of course, we'll look at 2021, march through the positions on offense and defense and the schedule as well. Lon, we appreciate you stopping by and uh, stay cool and uh, we will hopefully catch up with you soon. Absolutely, Mark. Take it easy, brother. Go Tigers.